In the work that we do, we focus on reconstructing Earth's past, understanding its present workings, and sometimes forecasting the future. And we do that through isotope geochemistry. So the main tool that we use in our research group is the tool of isotope geochemistry. And that requires a range of analytical methods whereby we can extract uh, very small amounts of particular elements and then instrumentation to analyze those isotope ratios in those elements at high precision. A lot of the work that we do focuses on the time part of the question. So we're, we're reconstructing events and processes that might have happened millions or hundreds of millions or billions of years ago. Those might be uh, solid earth processes, climate related processes, even solar system processes to try to add the time part to our greater history books. Center for Isotope Geochemistry includes two lab clusters. First is the High Precision Sumerian Neodymium Geochronology Lab at the Devlin Hall. It includes a clean room suite and two thermal ionization mass spectrometers. We also have a satellite lab that houses two isotope ratio mass spectrometers, uh, an ICPMS and a laser ablation system. So we support both fundamental as well as applied geoscience research, and that includes plate tectonics, uh, metamorphic geology, paleoenvironmental reconstruction. The project that we have spans development of early planetary system as well as uh, metamorphic processes spanning the whole geological time scale uh, up to the recent human activities impact on geomorphic processes uh, such as soil erosion, land erosion, and water shape changes. I'm really interested in how the ocean takes up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Often when we think about climate change, we think about carbon dioxide being emitted to the atmosphere and the increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, but we don't think about the fact that actually half of the carbon dioxide we emit today is being taken up both by the land and by the ocean. So one of my really favorite things that I get to do is send students to sea. So last year I had two undergraduate students and a PhD student who went on one of these oceanographic field expeditions to the um, Erminger Sea in the subpolar North Atlantic to a site maintained by the Ocean Observatories Initiative. I love working with both the undergraduate students and graduate students who want to go into the field of science to be people doing the kind of work that I'm doing to actually directly monitor how these things are happening, do the cutting edge research, and they're going to bring that expertise to thinking about how we need to be incorporating climate change into our expectations of what's going to happen going forward. So being able to adapt to the impacts of climate change and also to mitigate the effects of climate change. I'm the PI of Stable Isotope Biogeochemistry Lab. In this lab, we use uh, stable isotope techniques to study the ocean's biogeochemical cycles, uh, both today as well as in the past, and its interactions with the climate system uh, as well as uh, the evolution of uh, the marine ecosystem over time. So I wanted to look for someone who was doing work with corals and Tony was that guy for me and he was doing some really cool cutting edge work. The resources and money and just support from the department have really helped with field work and data analysis and support for all that. So that's kind of why I chose this department and they've helped me through everything with that. So rather than just classroom academic work, having an active geochemistry lab here means that the students get to come into my lab and generate their own data on our equipment. Students get to use mass spectrometers and x-ray equipment and learn how to generate data, not only for their own projects, but they learn how to use, calibrate, operate the instruments that we have to do their own research. And there's not a lot of places where an undergrad can come into a lab and use a mass spec. The way I think about education is that at the end of the day, it is about learning how to think for yourself. Not out of the textbook, not out of what I tell you, but your ability to be a creative, analytical, critical, skeptical thinker. And I always think research is 
the perfect venue for that because we're right on the cutting edge of knowledge of what do we know, what don't we know. And so I like to try to bring it into the classroom to help students understand that process, that dynamic of pushing forward and how do you go forward to seek out your own information. At Boston College, the student is our primary mission. And therefore, it's critically important that in, in everything that we do, whether it's in the lab, in the classroom, or out in the field, we're involving our students. And that's undergraduates, that's graduate students, getting involved in research with postdocs, with faculty, and collaborators around the world. I like to think that a laboratory like ours is really a place where people come together. It's a place where we welcome students at Boston College and our collaborators to work together. We have grown uh, in terms of our faculty, in terms of the research areas that we cover, and in terms of the analytical facilities that we can offer. And that growth trajectory is showing no signs of slowing down. So there's a lot of really exciting things happening here in terms of research, applied and fundamental research, graduate education, undergraduate education, and growth in our faculty and research staff. So the future is bright for Earth and Environmental Sciences at Boston College, and we encourage collaborators to join us.